invite the panel to come back here in front to have our panel discussion. Just a few points to remind uh, what we've heard so far. So we started with Andreas and Kalidakis, uh, who talked about other relations and uh, the way he he, he manages uh, to, to, to explain something as complex as architecture with uh, uh, the, our now very uh, different kind of communication. Then uh, we had Carson Chan uh, that uh, showed us the way Guillaume's scrutiny of patent was kind of an attempt to engage with technology and made a very interesting speech uh, about the idea of patent and what it really represents. Then we had uh, Katya Novitskova uh, that uh, showing both images of uh, Mars and uh, the robots used for having images on Mars and deep water images and uh, the way people uh, tend to um, talk about themselves when, for example, they have a baby and uh, how she finally put all this together in her work and it was also very interesting. And then finally, Shintaro Miyazaki uh, talked about Gaia and uh, how the planet has become a media ecosystem and uh, also with a few ideas, of course, that resonate in a, in a special ways with the uh, COP21 meeting now in Paris. So, um, Elise, maybe you have a first question. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think something came out of uh, the four presentations that we just, uh, we just heard. Um, which I feel is um, feels almost like we're dealing with science fiction in a way. I mean, not only because of the aesthetics that we looked at, um, no matter if they come from the past, the present, or the future. Um, but I have the feeling that the um, the thing that comes out, if there is um, something that actually connects your presentation, is that all those technologies or those devices that we discussed are seems to be more powerful than than the human in a way and that we have adapted to them rather than them adapting to us so i was wondering if um for example carson wanted to say something about that since uh, you you brought the more historical i guess uh, presentation out of the out of the four um, well, I mean, I, I, I guess just, you know, even the, the title of the panel, um, the word autonomy was a little bit confusing for me because I think what we've observed and what I've been thinking about, um, too, is that there, there really isn't an, any autonomy between humans and the things that they produce, that they, the, the things that we produce, rather. Um, and um, that it's, it's really about it's it's completely fused, you know, and, and you say science fiction, and we, we see from Katya's presentation that it, um, life is being fictionalized the moment it's happening. It's being represented the moment it's happening. And so the, the distance between, you know, science and fiction, between reality and its representation um, is, is no longer there. I think, you know, what's interesting for me in terms of Gideon is, um, um, well, one, to kind of, witness you know his his caution and his fear um and then realizing that you know we are living in such a condition and and it's not it's not really that fearful but i think what what's the secondary thing that, that is interesting is that um he in trying to take account of what it all means he's like we have to we have to uh, um account for for all the objects around us to make sense of it. We have to look at the chair, we have to look at the bed, we have to look at the shower. Um, and, and these things will, will inform um, our condition. And I think, you know, maybe in, in a similar way, um, you know, through art, and I think that's why he always defers to art, you know, like the, the Calder um, as a kind of symbol of balance, because we, it, it's maybe, I don't know, it's an easier way of doing it. And by, by deferring to art, um, I don't know, maybe you can help me finish my thought. Um, I don't know, maybe the art shouldn't, doesn't have to be a rigorous model that works every time re you relaunch it. 
it's just, you can make a lot of failed models or models that are partly ruins or based on ruins. So there's like a flexibility in there of what are you engaging with in terms of meaning, in terms of material, in terms of uh, con like also conclusions from it. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think I was also interested about the, the notion of failure because uh, in uh, Andrea's presentation, Carson and, and Katya, I think this kind of impossible models or models, um, yeah, just as a, as a concept, I guess, helps us going beyond something. I, I, have, I think there are actually, um, they bring an amount of information and uh, analysis that would not be possible with actually the real thing, if we can speak about the real thing. I don't know if you, if you understand what I mean, like all those failed um, objects, all those patents that actually existed only as a concept and were not always produced. However, the information um, they convey is as important as if they had been produced. And, uh, and this came in your presentation, Andreas, you um, training yourself to, or training a structure to, to fall or collapse. Um, yeah, so in that sense, I guess the non-existent object is, is a very interesting figure to, to learn. I don't know if, Andreas, you want to say something, but... <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm, somehow I'm still uh, caught on the last question about autonomy and how the things, you know, they change us rather than we change them, but it's not, it's not really black and white. Um, I think we, we kind of, we know, we make objects and then we, we change our behaviors according to, to what these objects offer us and then we, we modify. And, and the, the ones, you know, the YouTube, let's say, um, day in the life video is the one that is surviving and there's other kinds of objects like that that didn't survive. So there is a kind of natural process. Um, like a, a website like Friendster was a kind of failed object, mm. but it also is what kind of gave birth to Facebook, which was a, an object that, that is still alive. Um, so I think failed objects are, are equally as important uh, because it's kind of a, it's kind of a, yeah, it's, it's a process that's in, in process. So um, things, things always like, you know, shift. Can I add to that? Please. So for me, uh, working with objects is very useful, but I would also go a little bit further and speak about, I mean, the Friendster is a website, it's kind of a sit media system, right? So there are different objects together interacting with each other. I have a very rigid no notion of object, like it's just like a thing, but all these kind of systems we are working with are, are more than just one kind of you know, like, like this thing, but it's like this thing and this thing together and they maybe they, they collide and then another thing is coming and so on. So I, I think it, um, the notion of object sometimes is, is not so useful. I would go a little bit further and say like, we have like non-human feedback systems or like, you know, like um, a circuitry which is connected to each other, like a machine more. And sometimes these machines can get, of course, out of control or break, and this is very interesting. And it, obviously, it's very difficult to program like something collapsing, right? It's, it's, so it's, wait, so you mean an object cannot be a system? Yeah, like a like a, a building collapsing. I mean, is very, I think very this this water bottle is a system as well. It yeah, has yeah. all the all the property. It's not just an object, but I mean that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Like a page is an object because that's how we identify things today. Mm. Like Instagram is an object and it contains other objects. Yeah. Maybe it's just a difference of... We, Your microphone, please. Maybe it's just a difference of the word, but we, need, we mean the same thing, but I wouldn't call it an object. Yeah, okay. yeah maybe, maybe I have a question uh, for 
Carson also, which is maybe a bit uh, outside of the, the, the discussion, but it, it struck me when you, when you talked and when you presented that fascination for, for the patent, and I was wondering whether it could have been only in the United States, I mean, uh, his analysis of, of that kind of, of, if the relation with patent is not exactly the same in America as it is in Europe, because there is also kind of a, the, the American dream, or we always talk about people in Los Angeles that everybody is supposed to have been thinking about a scenario at one point because you want the American dream to come true and the scenario to become a major movie and as well maybe an object that could be the object of the next generation and then there are all those failures as you said. Yeah, well, so the American patent system is, is modeled after British patents. But um, you're right in the sense that uh, this kind of idea of, um, of, of using the patent as a kind of vehicle for driving society forwards is, is very much an American kind of phenomenon. Um, it's in the Constitution, the patent. You know, the idea that you have a limited amount of time um, once you declare it to the state to commodify this thing and earn money from it, um, excluding other people from earning money um, from, from this object. Um, and it has to be an inventive thing, and it has to be a novel thing, and it has to be a useful thing. Um, and so the idea is that you know, giving people these kind of um, temporary rights to, to monopolize will, will push both creativity and, and, uh, and a kind of uh, national um, commercial interest. Um, and I think, yeah, you know, I guess like what, what's interesting for me is that it, it starts to take on a logic of its own. Um, that people start to patent things that um, have no practical use, um, but you're he kind of hedging um, the bet that one day this could be of use. So the, the tricycle that become that is also a hammock, um, you know, there's there's no there's no use for it, and there was no demand for it, but it anticipates one. So this idea of kind of um, creating uh, creativity um, being kind of kind of fused with um, national interest, being fused with commercial interest, and then of course being fused with a machinic interest um, or technology um, is kind of has this nice, you know, exists in this nice kind of document called the patent. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, 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 just um, that the same with YouTube in a way that one of the reasons why the model works um, is mostly American, this idea of logging and um, this explosion of logging is because there's a big critical mass of people in the United States. We have several hundred million people with um, iPhones and, and digital cameras. It's very easy to create a culture of logging and very easy to imagine an economy of advertisement revenue, uh, a novel economy of novel advertisement revenue through that culture. So that sustains the whole economy. And then you have like a anti pot to that, which is uh, China, which is basically producing all these cameras and producing all these phones. So there's like a there's an invisible twin in the background who is doing things. Um, but it's the, it, the critical mass of attention and and behavior was uh, you know emerged there as maybe a self uh, you know as a sort of a form of a climate. Uh, and now it has almost like a geological force by itself because it so, burns so much, you know, electricity and it, it requires so much, you know, this idea that everybody has a camera and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, so one of the reasons why I think it's these things scale up so quickly in America is also just because of the option of scaling up, you know, it, it's, just, it's just so massive and everybody speaks the same language and all that kind of stuff. Which is basically why a lot of these weird new forms are emerging there, you know, that you see, and then they get copied in the other countries. You know. um, what, apart from from uh, what you said about um, the f new forms emerging, there is also kind of a very clear effort. What really struck me was the, um, the first video you showed of the underwater um, dead whale ecosystem. Uh, where they had added this kind of cute music. Oh, 
to add. Oh, did you added that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I w uh, it was uh, basically the video, the first video is a video of a rover that I saw on YouTube and the sound is the sound that happened to play on my SoundCloud in the background and then and it just somehow worked and then I screen recorded the whole thing because it, but it was two social media just next to each other and, and the whole thing became something completely different. But it's interesting, I thought maybe, uh, well, let's say let's imagine that they had added that sound, yeah. and because I've seen videos like this where you don't expect to have music, and then they have the added music, so maybe that adds views yeah. to the thing. So it's like kind of empowering. Well, in the in the in the um, pregnancy in the ultrasound shot, there was a quite kind guitar music on the background that they added in the post production. So that, of course, adding like a quiet cute music is a very, it's a trick that always works and everybody, even a lot of people use the same tunes. I'm wondering if there would be like patents for these kind of objects. Actually, that I wanted to continue this, this thought that you had about America and you know, what you were talking about too. And I think it's, we, we can't discount that there's a certain kind of um, perversity, you know, in, um, and this is going on the internet, of course. But there's, there's a certain kind of perversity in, in the American culture to kind of go to certain extremes, right? So to, to, put, every, to put your birth and your, your everything on, um, on the internet, um, I think is some, somehow akin to, to um, this kind of crazy need to kind of document and every idea, every kind of change in idea, like a... Um, every kind of you know, um, non-logical kind of you know perverse little idea gets documented in, in this kind of patent thing. And there's there's something you know I, as you kind of I guess you know um, sense like fundamentally American about that. But I think it's also kind of so I think as America as a kind of case study, you know, is maybe that's why it's you know so rich with these examples um, to see how far we can like our relationship with technology. Um, you know, can go. But maybe because of this uh, critical mass that uh, Katia was, was mentioning, because it's such a big, big country, but just maybe to connect with what uh, Shintao talked about before, can we extrapolate this phenomenon of the, the logging in the States about, you know, baby and everything to, um, to feedback loops and like basic theories of cybernetics because I'm wondering, you know, you're posting something on YouTube because not only you might make, make some cash but also because you need all the feedback coming in and the more feedback you get, the more you're gonna post, right? And I was wondering if Shintaro, you, do you, <laughs> do you allow us to make this analogy or, or do you have any opinion on that? Because to me it seems pretty obvious that then this, you know, our compulsive uh, behaviors online are are quite obviously related to that, right? Endless feedback loops, right? Yeah, just to answer shortly, my, the social networks and this kind of YouTube behavior is not my speciality, so I don't know too much about it. I would say, yeah, why not? Because it's, it's a media interaction, of course. And, mm. and, and, and basically, all, even on a, on a more fun, fundamental level, like technically regarded, <laughs> or, the, or media archaeologically, you can say that um, Internet is is already based on feedback loops. You know the packets need acknowledgement uh, and, and so on. These kind of nodes they need to communi communicate with each other, and this is very cybernetic already. And then what we do with it as humans maybe is then kind of trying to mirror it, adapt it. But sometimes it's also you know unforeseeable, of course. And we need also I don't, I won't, I don't want to give the impression that you know that I think that everything is controllable or like uh, very uh, you can model everything. I'm also very interested in this kind of um, disruptive and failures and this kind of difficult uh, models, of course. Yeah. Do you want to answer? Yeah. No, I, I, th I think you know um, all the presentations from you showed that um, either the question of feedback in terms of cybernetics or in ecology um, already contained, it's not, it's never a purely kind of natural 
um, phenomena. It always already contains technology in it. You know, so if it's if it's the if, if patents is a kind of um, expression of this kind of ecology, it's this kind of combining of uh, creativity with you know the world of commerce and nationality. Um, you know, and I was talking about the the mechanization of death, and you were talking about the mediation of birth, and so these kind of feedback systems already um, always contain both you know technology and mediation and a kind of biological system as well. Yeah, and I want to I want to say that um, it's a lo what we also have in common in the presentation is that it's not just feedback systems on the level on the horizontal level. It's somebody, a company built Second Life and then all the freaks come in but they own the infrastructure and the United States sets up the p patent system and um, YouTube um, has a very active role in shaping the content on its website and um, making choices for the development of the whole climate in a way. So it's not just self-organizing feedback loops, there's really strong actors mm manipulating the whole system, which is also a place of interesting, you know, clashes and research and what gets, um, what gets, what is allowed, what is not allowed, what is encouraged, what is not encouraged. Um, and I think it's also for, uh, for um, sort of, even in the vlogs, there's a lot of uh, clashes between, oh, we have to do this for advertisement for to make our living, or we ha we're doing this for fun, or we're doing this to copy other people. And overall, we just want, as long as we keep getting more views, we'll try to do things, but at the same time, we don't want to vlog too much because we actually have our own lives. And there's always these things negotiated, um, and in some cases more honestly than in other cases. Um, you know, what happens if somebody dies in one of these vlogs and all these kind of things which happen. So um, I think this idea of the, the different, the clash of hierarchies versus this horizontal plane is somehow present and important. You know? um, it's, I mean, it's true that there's actors, but I think the, the, the way that, that um, people can, let's say, organize media has kind of changed. I mean, what comes to mind is, is a place like Google+, Plus, which is like the biggest actor everywhere, Google trying to make a social network and failing. Um, and it was really like uh, pushed onto people, you know, like if you had the Gmail, you had to be on Google+, Plus and you had to be there. And it's incredible, like a thing like that from the biggest company in the world, following a format that is already successful somewhere else, would fail. So it's, it's interesting to see um, how, of course, there's, we are provided with things like, I don't know, Snapchat, somebody invented Snapchat, let's say, and, and some teenagers, I mean, I'm too old for that, but to understand it even, but um, somebody puts out a thing and then it becomes uh, successful or not, and then, of course, there's both actors and it's like, yeah, I guess it's all over the place in a way. And about America, I just want to say something. Maybe we're, as we're post-digital, maybe also we're post-American. Yeah. <laughs> no? <laughs> because it's like... <laughs> maybe we can open the discussion to the audience. I was, of course, kidding before what I said about posterity, you know. Uh, there are no stupid questions. And I have one question already, Adrian Piper, who is going to... So, sorry. Let's see, I think, I think I have one question for Andreas, Carson, and Katya, and then a, a follow-up question for Shintaro. Um, so what I got from the first three presentations in common, oops, sorry, bad, good, hello, good, okay. Um, <laughs> So what I got from the first three presentations in common was that you guys are either reporting on or you are modeling, in Andreas's case, this process of producing pathology through technological replication. Okay. 
Now, Karsten does it in the historical sense because he's talking about a process that basically begins with the Industrial Revolution. But it's this process by which objects are replicated and combined and mangled. And, you know, I think in, in the case of Katya and, and Andreas, it's, it's pretty clear in Andreas's case, we're beginning with a very short attention span. We're, we're uh, trying to accommodate objects to that by simplifying them. Uh, the easiest way to simplify them is to basically destroy them. So there's this process of entropy going on, right? Whereas in, in Katja's case, it's about how we're more and more mediating our personal experience through the, these theatrical forms of global presentation on the internet. And so, so the question that arises for me is, number one, do you guys think these things are a good thing or a bad thing? Okay, so now if you think they're a bad thing, then, then my question is for Shintaro because you're talking about ways through Latour's response to, to, to these sorts of phenomena um, of conceptualizing different systems for controlling them or dealing with them. But what if they can't be controlled through systems but only through individuals? Because ultimately, who's supposed to design the system and who's supposed to control that system? Well, someone has to be in charge. So if it comes down to individual responsibility for modeling or replicating or altering these phenomena, whose responsibility is it and what are we supposed to do about it? Thank you very much. Who wants to answer? Yeah, maybe I can start. I don't know, I guess personally I think um, you know, reading Gideon's thoughts from so many years ago and and reflecting on our condition and, and the hyper kind of acceleration of how we've mechanized and technologized our world, I don't know if I do moralize it in terms of good or bad, um, or, or or just simply take it at face value. You know, like is it is a good thing or a bad thing compared to what, right? And um, what you you, I mean, you make yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I don't know, I, you're asking a personal question, and I think personally I, I, would, I would think, that I would see that, you know, in these new conditions that we find ourselves in, in any new condition we find ourselves in, there's, um, we can only, we can find new potentials for, for being. Um, and how we take and grasp those new potentials can be good or bad, but the potentials themselves are not themselves good or bad, you know what I mean? Are mm. so, mm. I think we're well, I think I think we're not. Um, it's okay. hmm? It's, okay. it's, a, <laughs> it's good. Yeah, I I don't know. <laughs> That's the correct answer. <laughs> I don't know. Is oh, yeah. it? Um, yeah. So I. It's, it's two scales, and you mentioned it. There's a personal scale, how a he, person doing something is seeing the world and seeing his own action within it, and how it's sort of more systemic ecological view. And um, from this sort of systemic ecological view, um, I'm terrified by what I see in these vlogs because it's this, um, it's so um, just, like it's exactly what uh, you showed with the, just the hole in the ground and everybody running into. But I found it on the block. Yeah, <laughs> but they're blissfully un, like unaware of it because the, on the personal level they don't feel that movement and that pull towards the the hole, um, the catastrophe, and that is partially because it is America, so it is a first world country, and all these. The whole effects are somewhere else, mostly. And so what I see is a lot of consumerism, a lot of um, uh, wastefulness, a lot of conservative uh, values.
hear a lot. So a lot of values reinforce the way we define scary, um, a lot of gender normative values, all kinds of things that are sort of see, um, that are seen as uh, issues, but then on a personal scale when you see it, oh okay, it's just a family that keeps reinforcing all these things but they are they do it with the best intentions they want to be happy they want their babies to be happy but this is how they know this is what they know and it's very scary to see that also because it's just right there it's on the surface um, and it also even mentioned sometimes in the comments people say why do you why do you buy your children only Disney toys? Why do you do this? Why do you do this? Uh, there's always this fighting and some sort of feedback about it. Um, but I see it as, at the same time, I find it very valuable that I have an opportunity to observe this whole thing because I'm learning something about the world. And I think I'm getting some sort of insight. Um, so then it's good and bad. It, yeah, I mean, it's terrifying, and it's at the same time, it's it's incredible because nothing has ever, nothing like that has ever existed in the form of um, documentation of daily lives of normal people in a way. And so, yeah, it's it's both. It's always a conflicting experience. We should we should vote maybe. Can I have that microphone? It's better. No, I don't have to like. Um, Maybe as, as people are watching those, those um, vlogs about what kind of things that, that mom bought for her baby, maybe they're consuming that video instead of going and buying things. So it could be also a bright side to that. You know, people, people tend to consume these, the internet instead of... Con okay. Uh, well, I ended up buying like 20 of those baby swings after <laughs> seeing these vlogs from my work, but I still bought them. But, um, I was thinking about these un unpacking videos. I don't know if anybody has seen one. You know, like somebody receiving something and unpacking it. And um, it's kind of, it's kind of like um, getting that rush of, of consuming something without actually consuming, because like, consumption is like also too slow. There's like sometimes you order something from the internet and by the time it arrives, you already forgotten it. So even that has been sort of abbreviated. But I mean, I think it's good because we're we're learning stuff, as 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 Katya said. Like we're we're it's, it's a process. Otherwise, we would just like what go back to the 50s where there was like one car available and everybody had to buy that. I mean, there's there's no going back, so it has to be good. Or we, or we have to like um, you know like bad stuff as well. So so like answer the question on the models. Um, I think uh, so. You ask the who is responsible for them. So um, of course those people who designed them, and already there that you have like you have a team of people. So. Um, the, the responsibility gets kind of maybe um, distributed around in this team. Um, then, of course, th that name will be responsible for, for the model. Uh, but um, I, I was not thinking that you know that strict because I was thinking more about models like like toy models. So you, I mean, they can break and nobody get, will get hurt. But of course, you have models. Like the, uh, this one um, used by Club of Rome, uh, the limits of growth, which was very influential at the end, and it w was also uh, criticized a lot. But this is, I think, a different realm. We, I would not act in. I would act more. Maybe I would communicate with those people making the, the, these models, but it's kind of a other, other area. And also, there is a problem of, you know, if you're modeling these kind of self-organized processes, then the question of responsibility is very difficult to, to answer because um, it's kind of an interplay. And uh, there is like this term by, I think, Dirk Becker, the post-hero. So we are maybe all kind of, if we acknowledge that we are inde independent uh, to, of each other and there is like a systemic view, then maybe we are all post-heroes and there are no heroes anymore or no losers. And we need to, you know, 
fight these kind of sources a, li a little bit more different, that would be a kind of an answer. But it's a good, of course, good provocation to think about the responsibility. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question for Carson and then also a question for Katja and Shintaro. And I was really struck by the concept of mimicry and convertibility that Carson introduced uh, with this um, kind of organization taking command with regard also to the intellectual climate of the time when we think about uh, the Musée Imaginaire, the construction production of the fetishism of commodity that is all kind of inscribed in these technical uh, means of reproductibility. And um, I would like to um, ask you with regard to uh, that where it has taken us at the very moment, the convertibility is a kind of something that has been discussed a lot in the visual cultures uh, of, the, of the few years. I just would like to remind on the pure image that Tito Style brought in, where we have the possibility to think the image in a political economy of the present, the torrent image, the traveling image, the kind of uh, image that is changing its economic context and also becomes a social and political function. And I would like to uh, hear from you, uh, or like to understand where would you situate these kind of reflections of convertibility departing from the historical moment or historic moment of Steve Fribillion in the very present of spatial practices. I mean, because I think your specificity is really to understand the politics of spatiality with regard to the history and convertibility. I mean, also that, that we could stay at this notion of convertibility because I think it's really something striking and important, it allows a lot of uh, economic kind of reflections. And then the question I would have for Katya and Chintaro, and I think maybe also Andreas might uh, know in there, is uh, because Katya was saying that we are living after <coughs> the technological turn, and you also were asking the question, what kind of image can we think of in the present? And uh, maybe a question, I mean, without going on too long, would be uh, Shintaro, uh, is there an image, or what is the image that Gaia does produce? Uh, with regards, so I have in mind, of course, a uh, question of modernity at large, the image scale, uh, does the image of Gaia that Gaia does produce carry the potentiality of a decoding, encoded image with regard to gender, sexuality, and, and race? So I think, I mean, Katya's example was uh, very kind of striking with regard to this uh, life being turned into an image and giving birth and uh, delineating an image in an image scale. And I just wonder how you, t how you look at it, because I think this we, a lot of us try to understand what is the image of the present and the anthropogenic image, the image of the Anthropocene, if we turn it upside down that Gaia has produced the image. I mean, in the kind of cybernetic constellation of the human and the non-human. And I would like to uh, hear you on that, um, what you think uh, then uh, with regard to this construction, I mean the decoding process, the encoding and decoding process of uh, well, the, uh, the, the topics that I, uh, I try to uh, uh, refer to. Thank you. As we are quite late on the schedule, I'll ask the panelists to answer maybe in, in a short way. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for that question. It's uh, a lot to wrap my head around, but I think the, the, the process of convertibility in, in Gideon's work is, is, was also very interesting to me. And um, I can only think of it, I mean, in terms of today's, for him, it was, it was a kind of, you know, this something to be feared. You know, the hybrid, the converted, convertible thing is, is, is monstrous, you know, and he talks about half men, half whatever, um, not knowing, not being able to ontologically kind of ground objects anymore. Um, I think in, in the, con you know, our moment right now, we've um, instinctively um, or unwittingly kind of accepted um, convertibility. You know, there's um, the idea of, you know, half man, half machine is, 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 is I think, very much accepted. If, you know, not stated in such a way, but um, the way that we have, you know, as, you know, half our lives online, um, interact online, have friendships online, um, and, you know, and if you want to talk about medically, you know, um, um, you know, parts of our bodies being kind of bionic and so on and so forth. So I think, I think you know, it's accepted in a, in a very strange way. 
Um, I think for me the where the interesting part is um, convertibility and the slippage between that and comparability, um, and how and how things become um, completely you know comparable, um, and 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 the comparability of things um, starts to break down this line between um, nature and artifice, um, human and non-human, and perhaps you know provide another model, you know, I guess of ecology. Um, yeah. Um, oh yeah, it works again. <clears throat> I think it works. Um, yeah, it's a very long question, so my answer, my proper answer would be very long as well, and there's a lot to say, but I think the, <clears throat> it's basically, um, the example of the family vlogging and the example of uh, robotic um, recordings of environments and processes is, for me, it's the same. There's, you know, there's cameras and there will be recordings. So maybe it's not about images, it's about recordings and snaps of reality. And, and, it's, and these snaps and recordings, it's, it's sort of, it's a f different forms of data. Could be visual, could be not visual. Uh, and you know, people have responses to certain types of that data, which includes, uh, you know, looking at other people's lives. That's a big response. And machines would respond to a different type of data, to something that they have an algorithm to respond to. So, in the sense, it's for me, it's like this landscape of creation of these recordings of from reality, because enabled by the cameras and all the equipment. And and there's no end to it. You know, it's just going to get more and more and more. Every process will get just more encoded. So, like, if now I can see this woman's birth that she voluntarily puts out online, maybe sometime I will be able to see how her immune system is working in real time, or what's going on with her f brain function in real time, or whatever is on her mind in that real time. And I think this idea of recording will go more. And so the border between maybe image and data is fusing a little bit, and therefore it could be somehow maybe visualized. But this is like a speculative answer in a way. Like I'm just and taking things out of you know my head without being anything, just an artist. Uh, just follow up this um, image are made images are made so I'm much more interested in these kind of processes which underlie the image and even so I would say more like what would be the signals of Gaia or something like that instead of image because for me the image the idea of image is very much kind of connected to painting and photography and we have now electronics and computers and uh, the internet. So we need to change also the kind of the, the description, the terminology a little bit, I suppose. And that, so then what the image, I mean, Gaia, of course, is producing constantly images, and, but they are changing, so yeah. And, 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 and they're based on signals and maybe there is something underlying the, the code and the the digital code, which is the electronic signal and which is still going, you know, we are surrounded by electromagnetic waves, which are signaling uh, stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, the digital is not just the digital, but also analog. And yeah. 